today's project is the ice machine here is not working right. Oh, wait a minute. This is a heat pump. Okay, so we're uh, slightly froze up here. And uh, so they turned the breaker off. And you can see that's pretty thick. It's not just a light coating. Basically, we're uh, going to have to get this thing melted down a little bit. Even if I put it into defrost, which I don't think is working right, obviously. So he's able to dig us a little trail into the control panel here. I'm not sure what brand this thing is. It is 410A at least. Oh, look at that. It's Nordine. Good old Nordine. All right. So... Let's go ahead and put this thing into run and uh, see if we can put it into a defrost and see if we can force it in defrost over and over again to at least get some of the ice melted off of it. That way uh, we can melt the rest possibly with water, which is really great. But there ain't a whole lot of options out here right now. It's uh, well below 30 degrees and it's going to get even colder throughout the week. Defrost is set for 30 minutes, looks like. I don't see a speed up tab anywhere on there. All right, so we see how to do it. Let's go turn this thing on and see if we can make this thing uh, melt. I've got to admit, I did not know this thing had emergency heat on it, so it does have it, which is great. So we'll put her on heat, turn her up just a touch, and let's go out there and see if we can get that thing to come on. Now the furnace is down there in the crawl space. So I'm not sure if it's gas or electric yet. Like I said, never been here before. So she's a running. Let's see what we can do here to make this thing jump out. So let's get our jumpers ready to go and see what we got. All right, let's see if this works. That didn't work very good. That did not work very good. It says take common to defrost, which I would have figured would have been shorting it out, but evidently not. Test pin to C on the terminal strip. Well, we are on the terminal strip. That's common, and we took it to test, and it said leave it to lay thing there. Would it matter whether I did it common here or common there? The turd just did whatever it just did. Well, you can see the kind of quality people that installed this. Couldn't make it over to perimeter tile, and let's put a T in it before the trap. All right, so let's get into this thing and see if we can find out what blue. I'm hoping that they didn't cut corners to the point where they didn't at least put a fuse in there. But, uh, let's see if we can find out here. The 5 amp fuse there did blow, so we'll get a new one of those in there. It uh, looks like they've got three strips, probably about 15 kW in there. And uh, gives me a chance at least to check the filter and all that, so all that's good. They do at least have insulated duct down here. Let's go ahead and get that fuse in there, and we'll see if we can get it running again and get this thing uh, defrosted. Let's turn that off. Let's see if we can get this into place here. There we go. There goes the heat pump. You know, I haven't even checked to see. Is it putting out cold or hot? Come on, fan, turn on. Huh. You notice it came on immediately and the fan's not running because there's a delay in that thing. I wonder if we've got a contactor sticking. We may have a contactor sticking. It's starting to warm up. Yep, it's starting to warm up. So at least it's running in the right direction. So we know we got a reversing valve working. Nice of the fan to come on. That's nice. I suppose it's kind of got a little rounded thing there, so it won't short. I just, nice. I'm not a fan of freaking Nordine. 
All right, well, let's get this cover on here. We'll go outside and see if that contactor's stuck. Didn't even get around to it. All right, so I put uh, some foam here in the top. That'll make a cap for that, so it'll properly trap. That's getting pretty warm, especially for being uh, cold as uh, cold can be outside and being full of ice. So I'm gonna say our refrigerant charge is probably okay. Now granted, the fan's not blowing, so it could be a little off, but uh, check that filter there. There is no filter in there, so I'm assuming it must be upstairs, I'm hoping, in the uh, return air, most likely, and one of the grills on the floor. So we're gonna crawl out of here and uh, go see see what's uh what's not working all right this is electrical stuff so for our homeowners out there that are trying to get out of paying somebody to come out do not do what i'm going to do it's not safe kill yourself blah 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 don't do that so the contactor is not sticking which is a good thing not sure why it was running that quick and the fan's not running could be because of this jumped thing here. I have no idea. Not my brand. Yeah, look at that. Instantaneous. I'm kind of curious. Let's turn the thermostat off and see if this thing shuts off. Maybe we got a fan motor. Because the house is really cold. He didn't, like I said, the people that are here are not here. So I'm not getting good stories. So it might be just a matter of the fan's not running. And that's, but that wouldn't cause our. I wouldn't figure that would cause our outdoor unit to freeze up. Okay, the fan is running now. I'm kind of curious why the fan didn't come on as fast as the other thing did, uh, as the air conditioner. Let's turn this off. Come on, baby, shut off. Okay, there it shut off. Let's see whether the fan shut off. All right, so here's the filter, one of them. I hope there's more than just one 10 by 20. And the fan did shut off when I turned the thermostat off. So let's see if we can find the rest of them. I'm hoping they have these in all the rooms. And there's another one. It's got some washable media in that one. All right, so I looked all over the house and I found just those two returns, which does not seem like it'd be enough. This thing's been installed for a while. Um, anyhow. Uh, came out here, the, sy the system's turned back off, the contactor's plugged back in, it's not running, so need to set there. I'm going to check my defrost stat on this thing too, see if that thing's closed. It should be probably that yellow thing down there to the left. I'm going to assume it's probably it, so we're going to see if that's closed. Maybe it's never going into a defrost. Alright, so looking at the schematic here, R to DFT is your stat, drops on temperature drop, closes on temp uh, temperature drop. Obviously you can hear it ringing the bell, so it's closed, which is a good thing. So we eliminate that. Let's... Uh, Go ahead and get this thing up and going. Let's see if we can reread this a couple more times. Because usually you just jump two wires together, nice and simple, and it goes into a test. But they had to make things more complicated. So let's look at it one more time here. So we flipped it back on, and the fan immediately came on. So maybe I did something out of order down there. Maybe it took a couple seconds, minute, whatever, for it to get its brains back together. Hard to say. So we've got it back on regular heat. Let's go back outside and see if we can get this thing to go into a defrost. All right, figured it out. You gotta take tests to common. So we're putting it into a defrost. Let's see what it does here. The fan's shut off, which is a good sign. So we're basically running emergency heat mode. Our say auxiliary strips are on. Let's see if this thing can start melting some ice. Now it's only gonna be able to melt at the coil. It's not gonna melt two to three inches away from the coil. So at that point, that's when we're gonna have to melt the rest off with some water or whatever. Um, but yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna let this thing melt for a while. So I'm gonna let you wait for a second and see what happens here. But she's been running a lot. You can tell that kind of crazy amount of ice. That's pretty crazy. Now if it's just the compressor running, it's only pulling four amps, which is kind of, 
Kind of low, in my opinion. This unit is a two and a half ton unit. Full loads, 14, rated load, I should say. So, huh. Anyhow, let's go ahead and let this thing run for a bit and see what we got. Let's let her run. I'm wondering if, like I said, if that board is defective or is our defrost termination defective. So we're just going to have to let it run for a bit and see if we can get some melting going on. Notice there's nothing below water-wise. And you can hear it making some noises. So I think it's starting to melt some of it. Hard to say. All right, this has a 10-minute override, so it came out of it. So let's put it back into it again. I'm not sure if that'll work. Go down to here to this one. Ain't wanting to go into defrost again. That means probably that stupid stat has already opened up. So let's take a look at that stat and see if it's open. All right, according to that, it is open. So our stat is prematurely opening up or it's been yanked off there, wherever it is. Like I said, it's a red wire. It's probably, yeah, there it is. So it's down here in this very bottom corner. So let's see if we can get this thing melted some more. We'll go ahead and jump the uh, stat out. That's, that's our problem here, I think. It's prematurely doing its thing. So we'll go ahead and jump out the stat. Once again, don't be doing electrical stuff. You guys don't know what you're doing. Disclaimer, disclaimer. Disclaimer, disclaimer. All right, now let's try to put it back into a, into a defrost. I guess we can find out which ones are common up here on the contactor. Might make it a little easier for me. All right, so obviously the black one here is my common, so I jumped it out. We're gonna start our timer again here. We'll keep track of that. Look at that, it's actually starting to melt the ice off. So I think our biggest problem we're gonna find is that uh, the defrost termination is prematurely shutting it down and it's never completely melting the ice off because from what I'm seeing, it looks to me like it's uh, melting it off like it should have. But what you're going to run into is the uh, ice ain't going to come off for squat right now. So we're going to let this thing continue to go through its thing. It'll actually, what we could do until we get back, we can uh, just leave the defrost. Uh... Oh, shoot. Yeah, we can just leave it jumped and that'll allow it to calculate all the time and it'll go off on time instead of temperature which would get us by save them a little bit of money versus running electric strips but like right here either it uh, does it by the board recognizing that it's reached 68 degrees jumpers removed or 10 minutes has elapsed so that'll be good enough to get them going back to normal so it's starting to starting to make a little bit of a difference there that's got that big flat grill style to it. But yeah, let's keep on letting her do her thing here. Okay, so we've scraped some of the ice off of it, which uh, is doing a lot better. The inside is starting to melt pretty decent. Now here's the problem. This thing has quit in defrost mode while the defrost termination switch has actually jumped. And Basically, it stopped at about four and a half minutes. So I'm timing it again to see if it will continue to, uh, for the whole 10 minutes it's supposed to. If it don't, from what I'm reading here on the old uh, paperwork there, if things aren't right, you just replace the board. I don't see anything else that would cause it. I mean, it's pretty cut and dry. This ain't no fancy board. So we're gonna try it one more time here and then uh, probably just call it, call it a day after that. Cause I mean, if it's not gonna defrost to the point where I was trying to bypass the switch 
to get us by, then there's really no sense even bothering with it. We'll just leave it in auxiliary heat and let them finish until we get the part, and then maybe it'll melt off by then, depending on what the weather does, which I don't know if we'll have it in a couple days or what. It is a Westing house, so it says, but Nordine, whatever. They got too many dang different names. All right, so we've got good majority of it out. That way, if it doesn't get warmer, we won't have to spend a lot of time here when we come back. We got most of it dug out that I could get, but we're gonna order that switch, defrost termination switch, and a new control board for it. I redid it multiple times over and over and over, and never did it once go up to 10 minutes. It uh, sometimes is only a couple minutes, sometimes it'd be seven minutes, sometimes it'd be four minutes. So we got it as far as we can get it. We got most of it knocked off. So we're gonna get those things ordered and we'll be right back. For right now, what we did is we unhooked the common off the contactor and I'm gonna leave the breaker on that way. Uh, depending on how they got this wired up, it can help keep that uh, windings warm. Uh, I don't know if it's got a defrost heater on it or not down there. I can't hardly tell. It may not. I know mine personally doesn't have one. Um, it's a different brand, but um, just don't see it as often with the scroll a lot of times so anyhow we'll get back out here and we'll go from there all right told you if we came back freaking uh it might get colder and that ice wouldn't melt off so here's the reason why i went ahead and melted it off while i had the opportunity to do it because lately it's been pretty bad as you can see down there nothing's really melted but uh we got our control board and defrost termination switch here so we're gonna go ahead and get those things wired up all right so we got the power off i left it on while we were gone that way if there was any type of resistive heat whatever through the compressor that at least been powered whether or not it made a difference i don't think it probably did but made a good attempt anyway i'm gonna point out a little trick here that i've been doing lately pull out your bit from your little Klein handy dandy small screwdriver. And if you got, well, yeah, those ones there are the, are the old school ones, but you can literally stick that over top of it and pull down on those uh, uh, plastic pieces there. I might be able to use my regular Klein. Yeah, let's use, see if we can do it with that. That makes it a little easier. I mean, you can squeeze them with your screwdriver and stuff, but. This sometimes makes it a little bit easier. Here, see if we can do that. Yeah, it's too big. So, yeah, I've used, I guess we'll just use pliers like normal. I just did it on a couple other true electronics type boards and worked out great. But, yeah, we'll just do it the way I've done it for the last umpteen million years. All right, so we got it all out of there. This new one came with this little flappy plastic thing here. It's like a rain shield to help protect it. Got rid of that stupid sheet, uh, sheet of metal there. It just locked in there, so we got that out of there. Got the new defrost termination, defrost switch installed. Did uh, put it back in the exact same location. I added a wire tie to it there. That way the... Um, water will go down there and hopefully drip away from the switch. They didn't say anything about it, but less direct water going into the switch, the better. So we've got that in there. So we're just gonna have to get this thing back together, kick it on and see if it does uh, defrost like it should. All right, we took it off emergency heat, got it uh, seven or 62. Let's go out and see what we got. Gonna have to assume that it's no time delay. No LEDs on this, cause that obviously is too expensive. So we'll uh, give it a little bit here. I don't know if it's got a speed up timer. It says delay with a little jumper thing here and it's no delay. So let's, let's get rid of no delay. Yeah, let's get rid of that. There we go. No delay now. Yeah, it's set for 30 minutes of runtime. Doesn't seem to be doing much. All right, don't forget to turn the power back on because that'll delay you a little bit. Just had to make sure it had power here. So anyhow, it's running now, thank goodness. Thought we had a bad board. 
Um, shouldn't have to jump this thing funny like, so let's go ahead and put this thing into test mode. Which this one's very particular about its common wire. There it goes in defrost. Go ahead and start our timer. Also, as I was reading through the paper there, that delay there that we was looking at, that ain't the delay like five minute time delay for kicking on the board. That's a delay uh, when it goes into a defrost, like a quiet defrost that carrier would use. So that's what that delay is. And they don't want you to use it on a regular recepticating, recep compressor. This is a scroll, so it's fine. If you have a recep compressor, they said do it only if you got a hard start on it. So she's a running. Let's see how long it goes for here. Feels like it's in cooling mode. We'll let her run for a little bit and see if she uh, goes for the full duration that she needs to go for. Okay, it just kicked out at about two minutes and something. I have a feeling that the uh, heat shut off. So it took a little while to get it switched over. Yeah, I think so. That's on no delay, which is what they wanted me to do. Uh, must be what it's got as a delay. Oh uh, well, whatever. Huh. Now read through that again. Alright, so. Their instructions are so backwards. If you want delay, or if you don't want delay, put it to delay. And it, it's just, ugh. Just like don't remove, don't tell you to remove the jumper so you can short out the transformer. So I went ahead and jumped out the uh, defrost switch there because you know it kicked out. I want to know if this will run for the full 10 minutes if I leave that jump together. That way I can kind of know for certain if that board was fluky or if it really does what it's supposed to do. Because in theory, when that thing's jumped like that and it doesn't open like it's not going to, it will. Uh, run the full 10 minutes you know it's just my luck that it just starts snowing and sleeting and stuff like that <laughs> it was perfectly okay a little bit ago so good time for that little uh sheet of plastic there to protect the board i guess i'm trying something i've never tried before i blocked the top to see what kind of heat i can trap in there see if i can melt some more of that away from the coil might be working you wouldn't figure it would but it's worth a shot plus I got 10 minutes to work kill anyway I figured we was getting close to 62 and we are uh, getting the auxiliary heat working that's what I wanted to make sure of so I took it back up to two more degrees still timing it out yet all right so it's still terminated at six minutes and a half so obviously their paperwork isn't worth a crap. So we'll go ahead and undo that and put our switches back together. So anyhow, it works now. All right, that's gonna wrap this one up. Um, you know, uh, honestly, did the board need changed? I'm not real sure now. Um, at this point, when the factory gives you bad information and they say that if the defrost board does not open, and it will run a maximum of 10 minutes and it only runs six or seven or five. I mean, it did all kinds of different ones. It's been a few days since I've been here. Um, it leads me to believe that factories should know what they're putting in there and what it is supposed to do when the defrost doesn't open. doesn't say a whole lot for the quality of the product. Um, I know there's a lot of good ones and bad ones out there, but you know, I've always been Linux and carrier, but I am not impressed with this thing at all. I'm um, going to wrap this thing up. It's working. Uh, it's shut off. And we're going to head on to the next one. Until next time, guys, if you want to see more like this, you know what to do. Later.